Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ashlyn Corcoran, your session moderator for today from Way Up Yellow. I'll be your host for today's program. This session focuses on how to be successful acquiring an entry position in the finance, accounting, and banking industry. We have four experts here from top quality institutions to talk you through where you should start your own personal journey through your job search in these industries. Joining us today are Deirdre Mattis, Manager University Talent Acquisition at KPMG, Morgan Fowler, Campus Recruiting Diversity Sourcer Campus at J.P. Morgan Chase & Company, Daniel Noon, Assistant Vice President, University Relations at City, and Oscar Sid Del Prado, Lead Chicago Campus Recruiter Consulting at RSM. Thank you all so much for joining us today and thank you to our attendees as well. We are excited to be a part of this journey with you. To start a discussion today, we really wanna dive into the many different directions to take your career in the financial industry. Really, it's really important for you as a candidate to determine where you wanna go with your career. Oscar, if you're okay, I'm gonna start it off with you um, to give us a little oversight of the industry and how candidates can determine um, where they would like to go. Yeah, thank you for, for having us. This is a great question. And I think that the best way to answer this question is by working backwards. Um, and what I mean by that is, what are you looking for in an employer? Um, what kind of firm size are you looking for? Are you looking to experience a large firm experience, mid-size, boutique? You know, cultures are, are very different, you know, within each of those um, uh, company sizes. Um, you know, find organizations that fit your your core values. And this is a very important one um, uh, point to, to talk about um, because, you know, you want to make sure to, you, you're looking at employers that align with your values, what you're looking at in an employer, whether that is flexibility, whether that is, um, you know, being able to to grow uh, within the company, right? These are these are great, uh, great things to think about. Um, and as you explore and as you navigate through this through this process, right? Don't be afraid to to reach out to professionals. Um, we're we're here to to support and um, and to answer those questions for you. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Oscar. And you bring up a really great point about the different financial institutions that do exist. Um, Daniel, do you mind elaborating a little bit on that? Absolutely. Thank you. Think about it a lot, like when you were looking to study at university or college, everyone wants different things. You might want a large state school, you might want a small liberal arts school because it's gonna fit your temperament, right? So I work for City. it's one of the most global firms um, and it's massive, over 200,000 employees. And so me, I'm quite gregarious, I'm very social, I like to network. It's a good spot for me because I can interact with a lot of people in a lot of different businesses. Other people might get overwhelmed with that. So maybe look into the boutique space where you're, you're on a smaller team, the deal flows are not as large. It's not as overwhelming to enter the office, right? So when I enter my office at 388 Greenwich downtown, there are people in and out all the time. Maybe that's overwhelming. So really think about your personality type and really discern, do I want large? Do I want small? Do I want mid-size? There's a lot of different options. When it comes to culture, same thing. You're interviewing the firm as much as they are interviewing you. So whenever you do any treks with your university or you do coffee chats or you connect on LinkedIn, really take note in how those people are communicating. You'll get clues about each firm by how they speak, right? So each firm kind of has buzzwords. City is very big into collaboration. Our CEO talks about being the bank with a soul. So you'll hear that in a lot of employees in their own speech. So, you know, people present on their culture, but when you talk, you'll get the actual clues. So really just take note and be um, cognizant of those things. Awesome, yeah, thank you. Um, you bring up a really great point about just knowing yourself and getting to know, you know, the vibe and um, culture at these different, you know, financial institutions. Morgan, do you mind kind of diving in a little bit deeper on how candidates can really determine what they're looking for? Um, yeah, I would love to. And again, thank you for having us. Um, I think one thing that students really want to start thinking about is that it's just as important to know what you don't want as it is to know what you do want. Um, so asking those questions about the things that even throughout your collegiate experience that you've liked, that you've disliked, the conversations that you've had with professors, with mentors, um, really starting to kind of dive deeper into 
what those things look like, the things, again, that work for you and the things that don't work for you. And in starting to figure that out, you really have the ability to start narrowing down the questions that you want to ask when you're understanding if a firm's culture works for you, what size um, institution or organization that you want to work for, um, what type of career you really want to get into. And so as you, again, start to balance out the likes and the dislikes, the things that um, are a part of your core values, the things that you are kind of flexible, even flexible on, um, you can really start to pin down the spaces that you want to occupy um, and kind of where you want to go. Yeah, that's great. Um, so I think, you know, everyone's kind of run through how candidates can determine what they're looking for. And once they have done that, I think it's also really important for them to understand how they can get noticed once they know what they're looking for. Um, Deirdre, do you have any tips or tricks on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just to give it a little bit of a different spin, I know that Dan and Morgan um, both work at financial institutions. So Oscar and I have a little bit of a different twist. Um, we both work at professional services or public accounting firms, um, more of a colloquial term. Um, so kind of two different industries. But I think that, you know, a common thread between them is when we're looking at candidates, when we have the opportunity to interact with students just like you day in and day out, we're looking for students that have passion and excitement for the industry in which they're going into. So with a company like KPMG, you know, we have students that go into audit, tax, advisory, even some of our business support services like human resources. I mean, I think that really just bringing your passion and excitement for future endeavors will ultimately help you to get noticed. Um, I think Dan made some really great points about Students, you know, when you're going through this process, you're interviewing the firms just as much as we're, you know, getting to know to see if you're a good fit for our organization. So I think that really treating it, I, I kind of, I joke with some of the students that I interact with on campus that I almost like to consider the job search process, you know, when you're in your sophomore, junior, senior year, um, I would almost consider it another course or another extracurricular activity where you're really dedicating time to getting to know, you know, what you like, what you don't like, taking the time to go to those coffee chats or business presentations or meet and greets that your university may offer. Um, and events just like this to A, really get to know yourself and what you're interested in. And then I'd also take some time to do an inventory of your strengths. Really, you know, take the time to develop and craft your personal story so that when you're talking to folks from recruiters to upper level management that may be assisting at our different career events, that you can really, you know, stand apart from some of the other, just some, from some other students and that you can really feel confident that you're bringing your best self to the table and that, you know, the culture of the organization that you're interacting with really meshes with, you know, who you are. Um, and I think the biggest underlying current is always be true to yourself when you're talking to different organizations because ultimately that'll really what'll be to help you shine um, when you're going through what can sometimes be a scary. Definitely. Yeah. And you teed us up perfectly for our next question. Um, kind of diving into all this, as you mentioned, there are so many different um, jobs and um, different areas that you can get into that exist and that will help you guide your career. Um, Daniel, do you mind kind of diving into the different areas and how um, one would go about exploring those? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I think this is a really great question. And something that I tell students that I meet often is that, you know, take advantage of the fact that we're in this information overload age. So online, you can research any company, you can research all the different lines of business, and then you can ask questions. So when we do come on campus or we have these virtual info sessions, do that research prior so that you kind of can have a deeper conversation. I see this a lot with City. City, as I mentioned, is a massive firm. There are so many lines of business. I meet someone new every week that I didn't know their job existed prior to meeting them. Um, so I can imagine how overwhelming it is for all of you, but the perfect example I think is investment banking, right? It's probably the role that all of you are most familiar with, but even within investment banking, there are all different subgroups. There's corporate banking that works really closely with investment banking capital markets, markets, right? I can go on and on and on about all different areas that are very close. And then we have all different subsets within city, like personal banking, wealth management, and then the functions groups, the people who help our firm operate. All to say, I give you a list of all these different opportunities and it's kind of on you, honestly, to do the research, to know yourself as Deirdre and everyone else mentioned, 
and then connect with people and say, here's what I'm good at in school. And here's what I like. And here's what I'm most interested in. Where do you think I'd be a good fit in the firm? You know, don't, don't pigeonhole yourself and self-identify prior to these events. I think being open and, and curious is going to serve you well. Definitely. And you bring up a really great point about candidates knowing what they're good at and maybe what they don't enjoy nearly as much. Um, Morgan, do you mind diving in a little bit deeper just on when candidates do know what they're good at, how they can find that fit um, within an organization? Yeah, I would be happy to. I think um, Danielle and I were very um, closely aligned on how how we see kind of this process in the sense that um, both of our institutions have so many different offerings out there for students. Um, so completely co-sign the not pigeonholing yourself and kind of putting yourself kind of in a bubble um, and losing out on these other experiences and interactions that you could be having to learn more about yourself. Um, that being said, I used to be in higher ed before I came to J.P. Morgan Chase, and one thing I used to explain to my students is that um, forget the title, forget the name of the major itself, right? Go and look at the courses. Start understanding the things that you would be doing, the day-to-day -day responsibilities, and figure out if that's really what you want to do. So I'd say the same thing for students that have started to figure out what they're interested in, not just looking at the overall title of whatever the role is, but go and look at the job responsibilities, the descriptions. Are you actually interested in the majority of the things that are there? And if not, okay, maybe you have the ability to pivot to another opportunity that's a little bit different, um, but still has some of those aspects that you're really interested in. Um, I know, I think, three of us on here, um, also utilize Forage. And so Forage is a really amazing platform where students have the ability to basically understand a day in the life. Because today, asking about what a day-to-day -day is for any type of role is kind of impossible. So basically what Forage does is they provide structured projects based off of the roles that students are interested in and really help them navigate and understand, again, the skills, the competencies, but for a lot of my students, I've definitely seen that it helps them figure out if they really, really like something or if there are other opportunities or other roles that they were more interested in going through those forward modules. Um, so I think, again, just continuing to explore, even when you find what you like and kind of helping those likes navigate where you're going. Definitely. I think it's important for candidates, as you mentioned, to keep an open mind. Um, you know, we obviously hear about certain roles all the time, but there is just so much more out there. Um, Deirdre, what other tips and tricks would you have for candidates who are going through the process of really trying to find what is a good fit for them? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that both Daniel and Morgan shared some really great insight into going into this process with truly an open mind. Um, so I've been at KPMG for just a shade under eight years, which is wild to think that, you know, I've spent my the duration of my career here and I've held, you know, a host of six or seven different roles over the course of that period of time in vastly different, different industries. Um, and I think that, you know, that really translates to the job. I think that one thing to consider is the job that you take the minute that you walk out of college is not necessarily, you know, the job that you're going to have five, six, 10 years down the line. Um, so I think a really making sure that you align with the culture of the organization, because I think that oftentimes if you feel that it's a place you can learn and grow, um, there's going to be those greater opportunities for advancement. Um, but then also if we take a look at the experience, you know, as a sophomore, junior or a senior in college, um, there's going to be a lot of experiential and learning opportunities. Um, I know all four of our organizations have internship programs, um, and this is another opportunity for you to learn what you really like and maybe Maybe experiences that you don't like. You know, we at KPMG have over you know, three, four thousand interns annually, um, and not all of our interns that maybe start their internship in audit end up taking a full time role in audit. They may transition to tax or advisory. Um, but I think that you know, taking whether it be forage, whether it be internship, taking advantage of experiential experiential learning to figure out you know where your best fit is will ultimately set you on the path for success when you do take on the, you know your full time role post graduate. Yeah, definitely. And you bring up a really great point. I think um, that a lot of candidates here probably on this session are looking, you know, to dive deeper into and that's internships. Um, Oscar, do you mind diving a little bit more into how candidates can find internships and how, you know, 
how they should determine if it's a good internship for them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, Dan mentioned something earlier, you know, take advantage of, of the information overload that's available to, to everyone at this point in time. Um, do your research, right? Um, as I mentioned earlier, and we've been talking about this uh, throughout the, throughout the, this last couple of questions, right? What is it that you're looking for? Try to identify your most, uh, you know, your priorities in terms of values that you're looking for um, and jump online and start doing some research on, you know, on, on organizations, companies that sort of match your, your values um, and, and look at their, their internship um, or, or co-op opportunities, at least here at, at RSM. So RSM is a, um, one of the first choice advisors to the middle market. So we are, we are a professional um, services uh, a firm. So, you know, we offer audit tax consulting services. We do have internships available every, every summer in all lines of businesses. But we also have a, a leadership program called Pathways, and I can, you know, I can I can talk all day about that. But you know, do your research, and I know a lot of organizations, a lot of companies also offer, you know, early identification programs for sophomores, for freshmen that are, you know, trying to see if this is the industry for them. Um, and I think that the best way to to know if it's the the right the right choice for you is is to try it, right? Do an internship. They're, you know, low. Um, uh, low risk. And, you know, if it's a no, if it's something that you didn't enjoy doing, that's a step closer to finding your your um, your right match, um, if that is in the company or, or with someone else. So I encourage you to um, do your extensive research and, and take advantage of, of the technology that's available to, to us. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, to continue the conversation, I did want to dive into kind of a little bit of a different topic. You know, you've all mentioned that so much of this journey for the candidates is really knowing what their strengths are um, and making sure that they're defining success for themselves. Obviously, success is different to every single person. Um, Deirdre, do you have any advice on how a candidate can determine, you know, if um, a role is the right fit for them and if they're successful and they're going to be happy in that role? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think, you know, first things first, and this kind of goes back to some of our other questions when, you know, as a candidate, when you're doing your due diligence, when you're talking to, you know, four firms just like ours, or, you know, many other of our competitors within the marketplace, um, one piece of advice that I didn't mention earlier um, is I think what was really helpful for me and that I find a lot of students say is really helpful is when you're, you know, taking a look, when you're taking that inventory of values, inventory of culture, try to ask similar questions of each of the organizations that you're interacting with. Um, the answers may not mirror each other at every organization, but it'll help you to get closer to figure out, will I be successful at this organization? Will, you know, the things that I hear, do they resonate with who I I am and how I work and how I kind of produce product, whatever it might be. Um, again, because I think that really recognizing, okay, this is a place I can be comfortable. This is a place where I really see myself amongst the individuals that I've interacted with. Um, that ultimately will set your set you up for success personally. Um, and then I think that another another piece too is recognizing that you know as great of an inventory that you may do of your um, of your skills of your strengths right now. Um, recognize that you know you're first career out of, you know, out of undergrad doesn't necessarily need to be your last stop. Um, so whether it's that you're with this incredibly strong organization for two years, five years, or the duration of your career, um, I think that's something that, you know, I certainly didn't take into account when I was 21 and, you know, graduating with my accounting degree is that your career will take a lot of different twists and turns. Um, you know, I, like I said, I started in accounting, I was an audit professional, and now I sit in our university talent acquisition group. Um, and I can tell stories just like mine about countless individuals that I've interacted with at KPMG. Um, and so I think just recognizing that you will change, your interests will change. And I think that, you know, one thing that I recommend is try to find an organization whose interests and whose, you know, breadth of services will really help you to continue to carve out your career, um, you know, beyond day one. And I think that that'll really help you to find success in that first role. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you mentioned, you know, your first job out of college is not necessarily going to be what you're going to do forever, um, which is a great point. And I think a lot of times folks are just kind of led into a role um, just because this is what I did, you know, at school, you mentioned you graduated with your accounting degree. Um, Oscar, do you mind diving in a little bit on the types of questions candidates can be asking or what they should be looking for when they're considering signing on for an 
signing on with an organization and they want to know about potential career growth with that organization? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that really, that, that starts with uh, with knowing what you're getting yourself into, um, understanding you know the career path that uh, that you want to follow. For example, if you want to stay in um, in uh, financial accounting, or if you want to stay in, in in those professional services, you know there is a, a path that that you can you can follow to make it to partner, right? So, but you need to understand what that path and how that path looks like, and and the, the the time and, and the investment that that you'll need to uh, uh, to to think about um, as you as you endeavor in, in that career. So you know, again, I challenge you to to understand those um, uh, those career paths. Um, find yourself a mentor. Honestly, you know, it is it, it is who you know um, that um, you know that that can help you be successful. And you know, if you can find someone that works within the organization and understands the organization itself, um, and can talk to you a little bit more about the career mobility and career path, you know, that that is a, a great thing that you that you can do. Um, you know, be open, explore opportunities, be receptive, right? Um, you know, your your job is not going to look day to day the same. You know, day day in and day out, right? So you have to be flexible, but also be be hungry for uh, for growth, be hungry for uh, for the next opportunity, be hungry to to keep learning um, and becoming successful in in your career. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, you mentioned career growth, obviously very important. Another thing I think that comes up um, with a lot of candidates is understanding, is this what they want to do um, and determining why this is what they want to do um, or why this is what they want to do? Yes. Um, Morgan, do you mind diving in a little bit on how candidates can determine and kind of reflect on themselves of where they want to go in their career? Yeah, definitely. I love this question, especially how you started it with, we all have to define our own success, what success means to us. Um, I think especially for business students, finance, accounting, there's this idea that like Wall Street is it. I need to be in Wall Street. I got to be in New York. Um, and like, I fell prey to that too. And thank goodness I experienced it and had the ability to say, all right, Wall Street's not for me, but now I'm here at J.P. Morgan Chase, and this is very much for me. Um, and so I also love that you really hit on why, because start with why from uh, Simon Sinek has really always resonated with me in the sense of why am I doing this? What is my purpose? Um, and finding my purpose is how I personally find success. And I think um, that happens for a lot of people, especially for a lot of students, as they, again, navigate understanding their core values, kind of going right back to what Oscar said at the beginning, those core values being so important. Um, and from there, after you figure out what's most important to you and why you want to do these roles, why you think this role is for you, then you kind of go into how. How am I going about getting this role? How am I going about this growth that I need to have to continue to be successful? And then you get to the what, like, what are you actually doing? What is the day to day? Um, so it really is kind of this process of figuring it out. And um, it takes time. And exactly what you just said of your first career is likely not going to be your last. So if that why changes while you are in a role and you completely start to shift, that is completely okay. Just trust yourself in the process. Um, so for me, I think it's, again, finding that why of what success looks like for students that really helps them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Daniel, I'll pass it over to you here, but Oscar brings up a really good point of finding that mentor, building that network um, within your organization, which can really help you determine where you should grow, how you can grow. I think this is a really hard thing for a lot of candidates, especially new grads coming into, you know, as yourself, such a large organization. What advice and tips would you have for candidates coming in to help them to find that mentor or build that network? Great question. I think that it's a two-prong approach. Typically at any large firm, and I think Oscar, Deirdre, and Morgan would agree, you're going to have some kind of assigned mentor, right? It's kind of built into the internship uh, experience nowadays. And those are great. They can be really helpful. And sometimes it's a junior mentor. And that's where you can get tips on, you know, 
what do I wear? How do I commute? Where, where's the cool place to get lunch? But also, hey, I heard this acronym. I have no idea what it means. Can you help me out? Right. And then there's going to be a different level of mentor. And I think the best way to get it is be extremely open and receptive and show that you're hungry to learn because they're going to find you, right? I think people who are successful are drawn and they can identify folks who have that same uh, can-do attitude and pursuit of success. Um, and so when you're on the floor and you're, you know, asking the right questions, certain folks are going to be attracted to you and say, hey, notice a great question. Let me help you out here. And, and then you're going to get that natural mentor. And that's going to be the person that you're going to go to and be like, all right, here's my five-year plan. How do I build it out? And, I, and, you know, those are really, really valuable. I do want to pivot and just mention one thing. And I think it's really important, especially for the four firms that we're talking to today. This is a really grueling process and just be kind to yourself. You know, we are it can feel intense and it can feel like oh my god if i don't get this dream firm it's it's over and it's not you're going to end up in the right place there's also mobility processes and you know and we we're kind of hitting on this and it's just connecting all the dots your first job is not the end all be all kill it in your first job you know, you're going to get that good performance. You're going to be able to pivot. You're going to pivot again. If you would talk to us, any of us offline, as Deirdre mentioned, you know, there's wild stories. And most of us are like, I've, I can't believe I'm sitting where I am. And you'll hear that even from managing directors across any firm. Um, so be open, be hungry, and just be receptive. Um, yeah, thank you. I think that's some really great advice. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure on these candidates, I think, you know, to find that job um, right after graduation. To pivot a little bit, I guess, um, as our final wrap up, any last words of advice, funny experiences that you've had, or just, um, you know, any mistakes that you've seen from candidates or even from yourself? entering the workforce, entering this industry that you can help um, guide candidates through. Um, Dear Dragon, start with you. Sure. Um, I guess just kind of, and, and this is going to parrot a little bit of what Daniel said, but I think the biggest part of this process is give yourself grace. Um, as you're going through, you know, I, I still can vividly remember my sophomore year because that's when for the professional services firm, all of the summer leadership interviews took place. I just remember being consistently on edge during that entire two week period where, you know, it was constant interviews, constant assessments, constant printing out of resumes and, you know, making sure that all of my I's were dotted and D's were crossed. Um, and so I think just the biggest thing is give yourself some grace, take a deep breath, um, give yourself time to decompress after interviews. You know, I think, you know, to when you're going through the process, build in some little like treat yourself moments so that you do feel like there's a little bit of a relief relief from kind of the grueling time of going through interviews. Um, and I guess the one personal thing, and this was a super embarrass embarrassing little anecdote for my freshman year, um, but I went into my first career fair, you know, had my resume, had it reviewed, was feeling so on top of it, um, went in and gave it to a couple different organizations and uh, got a call back, which was super great, but um, didn't proofread my phone number. Um, and so of course, you know, I did have the wrong digit on my phone number, which thank goodness they decided to email me and let me know of my really tip top freshman mistake. Um, but I think the biggest thing is just, you know, when you're going through it, make sure that you're proofreading, whether it be emails of, you know, the, the interviewer's names or, you know, little details in your resume, just make sure that you're doing your due diligence and uh, making sure that you're, you know, have all of your ducks in a row to really be successful through the process. Yeah, definitely some good advice. Um, and I appreciate you sharing that story with us. Um, Oscar, anything to add here just as tips, tricks, advice, funny stories uh, for these candidates? So going back, going back to be yourself and give yourself some grace. You know, we've we've heard those those themes um, over and over in this in this conversation. So, you know, I I did not start my career um in, in in, fi in finance or accounting or anything like that. My first job out of college was as a juvenile detention officer. And I did that for, for a little bit. And then I moved to, um, similar to Dan, I, I, I'm a classically trained boy. So I did some um, some opera here in Chicago and, and back home in San Diego. Um, so things are might not go the way and, and the route that you think are gonna go. Um, be patient. Um, you know, the answer might not be in front of you, but the answer will will show itself and the right opportunity will come come your way. So be patient and give yourself some grace. 
Awesome. So I think moral of the story so far is pay attention to detail, proofread things, and always double check. Um, Morgan, anything to add here? Um, yeah, I think just kind of hitting on past points of just be open to a lot of different things. Um, I was a business management slash entrepreneurship major. And so the thought was business, right? My dad has been in banking my entire life, commercial banking. Um, and so there's this idea of like continuing the family trend, if you will, keep on going with what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and so even kind of with this background and kind of Deirdre as well, we are in finance, but we're not in finance accounting. So the idea that being open to different opportunities, I am my, I guess, embarrassing story, which also does include paying attention to detail. Um, after college, again, business major, I'm supposed to go to Wall Street. This is where I'm supposed to be. Um, I got three interviews, was super excited, scheduled them all for um, like two days. And I ended up in Brooklyn every day. I ended up in Brooklyn every single day. And I mean, I got callbacks to do second interviews four days, four times in Brooklyn. Um, so I kind of just realized Wall Street probably wasn't for me. Um, and luckily enough, on my way back home, um, I got stuck in North Carolina. And I had a connection at this institution. and went for an interview, absolutely fell in love with the culture and the system and um, the values of the place. And that's where I ended up first time uh, for my first job. And I don't regret it, but I really had to be open to something completely different that still encompassed those business skills that I had learned and helped me be able to utilize those transferable skills in a bit of a different way. Um, so attention to detail and be open. Awesome. Yeah, that's great advice. I think it's really important. As you mentioned, there is this sometimes pressure of continuing on a family legacy um, and just being open to different opportunities. Definitely really important. And Daniel, I will hand it over to you for any last tidbits of advice, funny stories, anything you might have. Thanks. No pressure on being the last on this. Um, I think the biggest piece of advice to wrap up is that it takes time. So again, back to the point of giving yourself grace. Um, I have two degrees in music and was an opera singer in a past life. So all my funny stories we can talk offline about. Um, but right, that that transition from from that world to corporate world and PowerPoints and, you know, where does the comma go? And people take those things very seriously in an investment bank. And so, you know, giving yourself that grace and learning and being open and owning your mistakes, I think is huge and something I learned. And then the last thing I'd just like to say is, um, don't be afraid to be unique or quote unquote weird. I think I've taken that opera singer, you know, uh, label and use it to my advantage, right? Because now folks remember me. They say, oh, they might not know my name or exactly what I did, but they're like, where's that opera singer guy? He had that, that point in that meeting, right? And so finding a little niche and finding your space, especially in a really large firm, um, is good. And so own it and, and don't apologize for being yourself because, again, you got to be yourself and you just got to gotta own it. And, and that's how you'll find success. Awesome. That's some really great advice. Um, well, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Thank you to our panelists um, and thank you all to our candidates um, and anyone listening to this. Please feel free to reach out with any additional questions and please do take advantage of the many resources that are available to you um, from the Way Up and Yellow platforms. Really excited um, for your journey. Thank you all. <laughs>